Hey everyone, my name is Bedelin, and in this video we're going to have a look at Flux1, a series of models created by Black Forest Labs that can generate images such as this one. Pretty cool, right? So I'm going to show you what this model is, then we're going to download a version of this model in a Google Cloud Notebook, and I'm going to show you the different parameters along with some sample prompts that can generate a lot of pretty cool images actually. Then I'm going to load a photorealistic adapter that will make images such as this one even better looking. Let's get started. If you want to follow along, there is a completely free text tutorial on mlexpert.io and it is within the blog. And then Flex1 Dev Photorealistic and Cute Images. Here you can find the complete text along this tutorial with a source code and a link to the Google Cloud Notebook. The Flex1 series of models were released by Black Forest Lab just a month ago and here within their blog post you can find a lot of information about the company if you're interested within that but one of the more important thing is the models themselves and here you can see that according to their chart the flex one pro which is the best model that they have thus far the dev model and then the schnell model which is the open model that you can try as well are pretty much on top of the charts along with other models that they're currently beating. And here is a nice breakdown on the different models. We have the Pro model, which you don't have the weights for this model actually. And this model is only available via APIs and the outputs of this model are for commercial uses. And of course you can, you have to pay for that. Then you have the Flux1 Dev model that we're going to load in a Google Club Notebook in a bit with open weights, but the responses or the generated images from this model cannot be used for commercial use. And then we have the smallest model, which is their fastest. And uh, as they say here, it is tailored for local development and personal use. So pretty much you can get the outputs of this one and use them however you like. This is licensed under Apache 2.0 license. And yeah, but what I found by trying out the different versions, I believe that the dev version is pretty, pretty good, along with some prompting skills. The smaller model is, of course, not that great in practice. Then uh, they're talking about the Transformers powered flow models at scale. Of course, this is a transformer and it is nicely integrated into within the diffusers library from Hugging Face. And they say here that this is actually a hybrid architecture of multi-model and parallel diffusion transformer. And the models are actually, all of the models are of 20 billion parameters. So the number of parameters are not uh, reduced within within the models, but just the way that they did their distilling and training probably, since we don't actually know how those models were trained. The weights for the Flux1 model, at least the dev version, are available within the Hugging Face models repository. And this is a gated model, so you need to accept the terms and conditions. I have a Google Club notebook that was running an A100 GPU. You will need to have a paid account within a Google Club to select this GPU. And this particular GPU has 40 gigabytes of VRAM. This was enough for me to load the Flex1 dev model. Then I'm going to install two libraries, the Diffusers library and the Peft library. The Peft library, I'm installing the latest version of that, at least on the time of this recording. And for the Diffusers, I'm installing a specific commit since there was a bug or a additional feature that allows you to load WARA adapters on top of the base Flex model. And within the addition of this PR merge, we have uh, availability for loading this photorealism adapter on top of the base model. Probably this will be released in the next versions of the Diffusers library, and I'm going to update this notebook when this is happening. But at least for now, you have to use this same commit in order to have a working version of the photorealism adapter on top of the base model. 
Then I'm adding the imports. Those are pretty simple. I have a torch library, map pot library, since I'm going to show you a couple of images. And then the diffusers library actually have a flux pipeline, which is specific for the flux one model. And in order to download the model, you have to call flux pipeline from pre-trained, pass in the Hugin face repository with the weights. And then I'm going to load this in float 16 format. And I'm going to put the pipeline on the GPU. The model is quite large actually, and it will take some time in order to download this even on a Google Cloud notebook. But after everything is complete, you can see the tokenizers, the transformer, and the variation of autoencoder. Everything is pretty much here within the pipeline. So next I have a helper function that I'm going to call generate images. And this is the essence of how you generate images with flux one dev. You have the prompt that I'm going to show you a couple of prompts in a bit. And for this demo, I'm going to keep the width and the height of the images as fixed 124 by 768 and i have a guidance scale which i'm going to explain in a bit output is going to be a pure image i have number of steps this is the number of denoising steps that the autoencoder is going to do for us but again i'm going to show you in a bit and you can actually specify the number of images that you want to be generated. And one very interesting thing about this model is that the different images are actually pretty varied. You have a nice diversity of images when you want more than one image to be generated. And I'll show you that in a bit. And then on each generation, I'm going to set a fixed seed for the generator. So you will be able to reproduce the result that you see throughout this tutorial. And the final part is the war scale. So when you apply the war adapter, the weights on the war adapter, you can essentially scale those and apply, if you will, a straight or a weight, a strength or a weight on the war scale. And this will give you a nice combination of how strong do you want the war adapter to influence the final generation of the image. And I'm going to show you an example of that in a bit as well. By default, I'm passing in a value of one here. So this is the prompt that I used in order to create the image that I've shown you at the beginning. And if you want me to make a tutorial on how to prompt those types of models, please let me know down in the comments below. And here is the first prompt. You can see that this took even on this pretty beefy GPU. This took about 14 seconds to generate. And here is the result. I would say that this result is pretty, pretty good, at least for a first try with some very simple prompting. And I'll show you that when we are actually using the realism adapter on top of that, we are going to still make an improvement on top of it. For now, I'm going to open this in a new tab. Then uh, I'm going to show you the generation settings. I was uh, talking about the denoise denoising steps that the diffuser is going to do for us. And uh, the default value was 30 that I'm using. And I'm going to show you what happens when you have, for example, five steps. You can see that we have a lot of noise in this image. Then 10, still some noise. 15, now the results look a bit plasticky, I would say. Not very realistic. On 20 steps, we have something a bit better. But still, you can see the cheeks and probably the teeth. And then after 25 and 30 steps, you can see that the realism is much improved compared to the previous results. Next, I'm going to also vary the parameter for guidance. So uh, you can think of the guidance parameter of how well the model follows the instruction from the prompt. But the trade-off here is that the actual output might not be as good as uh, if the guidance was low enough. So in this case, uh, you can see that with the guidance of two, the image is quite good. Four, 
I don't really like 6 and 8, but I would say that 10 looks again pretty good. So it might be a good way to try out these parameters when you're essentially trying out the model. Okay, so I have promised you to have some cuteness. Uh, and yeah, with this prompt right here, I wanted to create a Hydra. So uh, this is the actual Hydra or cute Hydra that the model have created for us. I mean, this is pretty stunning. When I, when I saw this, I was like, wow. I mean, look at the details. Of course, there are some things that are a bit sketchy right here, but look at the focus the eyes, the nostrils, I mean, the level of detail is mind-blowing. I mean, there's probably too much symmetry here, but even still, it looks pretty amazing. Okay, so the authors are actually claiming that you can vary the images or uh, you can have uh, an output that uh, vary if you just request a couple of images. So I wanted to create two adorable penguins that are holding hands on a beach. Uh, I'm going to show you four different images for that. Yeah, let me show you this. Okay, so uh, you can see that especially between, for example, the first one, the third one right here, and the fourth one even, the style is completely different. So just by setting a number of images that you want to have a look at, uh, you can get very different results right here. I mean, yeah, look at this. It, again, the style is completely different on some of those, but even if it different, it is different on an image, you can see that the style for this particular image is quite consistent, which is again, a great thing. Okay, so next I'm going to be adding this XWAPS AI Flux Realism Aura adapter, which is a pretty tiny adapter. Uh, it is only 22 megabytes. It, this is created by XWAPS AI. And here they have a lot of examples. I walk with an explanation of how they were training the model and uh, some pretty cool examples of how this adapter is actually working under the hood. So here I'm just loading the adapter and I'm calling what what adapter awaits and I'm passing in the repository path on the hanging face and then this is the water safe tensors. Let me show you here the water safe tensors file. And I have exactly the same prompt for the woman and this is the new image and at first sight it might seem that this is pretty much the same image but let me show you the differences here. This was the original image and this is the photorealism adapter image on top of that. One thing that you can notice is the additional hair right here. Note that. And also, one other important thing is the imperfections within the skin that this adapter added. I mean, here it looks too plasticky or probably too much makeup, I'm not really sure. But here it looks much more natural, if you will. Yeah. So try out, give a try to this adapter if you want to have some photorealistic images, of course on humans, that would be the primary use case. Next, I'm going to show you uh, something a bit in more interesting, I would say. I'm going to vary the scale of the water scale between 0 and 1.0. And this is the image that we are going to have. Let me open this. No, I can't actually. But let me show you, with a water scale of zero, here you can see the excavator. You can't really see any characters here. The excavator has a mouth and eyes, etc. But not such a great detail on the floor. 
And when we apply the photorealistic adapter on this with a full strength, uh, you can see a lot more detail here. Uh, here we have some black dots, but here we have some yellow dots. Uh, let's generate an ocean front house. And this is the prompt that I'm going to be using. I'm going to generate four different images of the house. And this is the result. Which one do you like the most? Uh, probably my favorite is actually this one on the bottom right. This is again using the photorealism adapter on top of that. You can see, see the shades in the water, the small waves, the blending of the sun with the shade right here. I mean, yeah, it looks it looks pretty good. Of course, uh, you might say that this is uh, AI generated, but even still, it is pretty good, I would say. Okay, and the next one is going to be a bedroom. Let's try this for interior de interior design. This is a minimalistic Scandinavian style bedroom, if you will. And again, I would say that the bottom right is my favorite, probably. All right. And the final prompt is going to be a unicorn since, yeah, we're going to finish up with that. So these are, again, the four images with the photorealistic adapter on top of it. Uh, I would say that this one looks pretty cool. Uh, this one too. And this one too. So this is it for this video. Go through the tutorial, have a look at the source code, and let me know what you have generated into the comments of this video below. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. Also, join the Discord channel that I'm going to link down into the description. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.